This is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one, between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York Giants. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, we welcome everybody to the Garden State. EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the side of their men in blue emerging from the MetLife tunnels. We're set to go as the Giants get ready to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at this Giants ball club. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. On the other side of the field for the visiting Bucks, they come in after tasting defeat for the first time in about a month as their loss snapped a four-game winning streak. The NFL season has hit high gear, and off we go in Week 11 on EA Sports. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Giants ready to start their initial drive of the game. And they'll be let out by the guy under center, Charles, their quarterback. And what's a quarterback's best friend? balance I think you're right <laughs> I agree with you you know a lot of guys would say a great receiver right a terrific offensive line but I agree with you balance because if you can run the ball effectively that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages right, to read and they said balance will be a focus in this one yeah they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders I don't believe I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off a big play there the first play of the game 43 yards well partner I'm not sure how this drive's gonna end but how about the way they flip field position there a nice attacking play they picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage finding his target it's Cody Latimer and inside the 20 before he's brought down give him 12 yards on that one it earns him a fresh set of downs They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. In on the stop, Vernon Hargraves. And the offensive starters for the New York Giants. A key cog in this passing attack is Evan Ingram, who was a rookie out of Mississippi in 2017. Gave the Giants 722 yards through the air and a whole lot of excitement building for his future in 2018 and beyond. Drafted as a tight end, plays more like a wide receiver, able to get downfield and win one-on-one -on -one routes against defensive backs. And the tackle there by Quan Alexander. The starting 11 defensively for Tampa Bay. The heart and soul of the defense is defensive tackle Gerald McCoy. Six straight Pro Bowl seasons. His ability to move up and down the line of scrimmage and create mismatches is something that really helps out the Tampa defense. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. All right, here we go. Green, 39. From the gun, Stevenson. And Ingram holds it in. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Brandon, lest my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, that's the second time they've gone to him here on this. And he takes it into the end zone for a giant TD. Saquon Barkley with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Giants take it right down and score on the opening drive. Building confidence after a loss, that's a good way to do it. The loss last game, but first drive here in this one, cashing it in for six. Yeah, they can talk all they want about putting a loss behind them, 
I think that drive there did more than any conversation they had, don't you think? That's exactly right. Puts that to bed. And this is what they said all week long. A lot of things they needed to do differently. But whatever they said appears to have worked. Rosas good with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. Here's Humphreys. And he's able to get it up close to the 35, but hang on here. Penalty marker down. And this one might be going the other way. Return team. So that will push him back. And now we know why I have a little extra space to run, don't we? An illegal block in the back. That penalty will move them back. Throwing now. Taylor on first down. And he will find his man on the outside. Give him eight on the play, and it'll be a second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. All right, here we go. Now Taylor on first down. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That one goes for 24 yards. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, right, stepping back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up and run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Now it's Taylor. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. So not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Hurry up, here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he fires one, but incomplete. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. That doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. On is Chandler Catanzaro now for the Buccaneer field goal. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So yes, it's only three, but at least they're able to answer back after giving up the touchdown to start the game. Yeah, I like the observation there because getting some points on the board, very positive for them. Feel a little bit better about things because if you don't score, you potentially have opened the door for them to score again, and then you're down 14. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now out come the Giants. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things right, are going to work go. out in your favor. They'll start out on the ground. It's Saquon Barkley, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Set! Green, 39! Green. On second down, they run with Stewart. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 
The numbers on the ground for Stewart last week. You see the numbers last week for Davis. In the end, not enough to help get him the victory. And as we look forward to this week, don't you just get the sense that he's going to get the ball a little bit more? I mean, that's just how it reads to me. I don't know how you're feeling about it. Well, they it. talked about that with us this week. That's going to be a priority for them. Give him the ball, let him do his thing. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with a football here as we begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. Shoves him aside. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And you remember pre-draft, there was a lot of speculation that the Giants should look for their future quarterback at number two with a great possibility. Remember, Sam Darnold from USC was still on the board, but they passed on him to take this runner, Saquon Barkley. And this is exactly why. They think he can extend the life of Eli Manning's career and give them 1,000-yard seasons year after year. They haven't had a 1,000-yard season since 2012. Ahmad Bradshaw did it then. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. I know it's the first half, but it's still hard to curb the enthusiasm for that stop. Third and one, and the offense can't get there. The defensive team has got to feel very good about themselves. Great job out leveraging the offense. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Back deep for the Bucks, Deshaun Jackson. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. But well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Set! Green, 39! Green, 39! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run! And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Oh, yeah. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving him a whole lot of credit and thanking him for that much space to rumble. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Set! Green, 39! Green, 39! Right back to him on first down. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, right, this go. big defensive Green, lineman 39. will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. 
The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They got the lead last time, had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Officially a minute 54 to go in this first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. to throw again. Stevenson. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. And now the Bucs deciding to take a timeout defensively. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. On third down, Jonathan Stewart. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Riley Dixon now as he'll kick it away for the second time. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, right, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They go play action here on first down. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football. He's taken down. Olivier Vernon in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Now Taylor to throw on second down. And his throw is incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. On third down, it's Taylor. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Oh, nice move. <laughs> Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. Here now time to discuss Odell Beckham Jr. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no right, targets, go. but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. I know how receivers think. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. All right, here we go. 319! 319! 
On first down, Stevenson, throw left side, complete to Ingram. 12 yards there as they move the chains. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one, and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On first and 10, Stevenson over the middle complete. That's Shepard. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Looking to throw on second down. Stevenson. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And that was not the long, drawn-out drive that you were talking about when it started. Anything but. I saw this drive going a little differently in my mind, partner. <laughs> I think we both did, unable to really move it. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. To throw on second down. Stevenson to Barkley on the check down. Offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. And Rosas puts this one through. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. On the return, this is Jaquiz Rogers. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. they got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. 
You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept their middle by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Here we go now. Green. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Here's Taylor. He's going to look deep down the field. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried, he's not hit, and somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just gonna shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Catanzaro's kick is right through, and high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL, let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come back now and redeem themselves? Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Stewart on the counter. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles, and his feet never stop moving? to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here we go now. 319. 
throwing on first down. Stevenson. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Now a handoff, this is Stewart. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard and it'll set up third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, it put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there, that play got swallowed up. The Giants on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. Set. Green 39. Green 39. From the gun, Stevenson. He dumps it off to Barkley. Seven yards on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. side here and he'll be taken down for a loss back at the three he'll wind up losing a yard on the play and it'll be second and 11. one thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick make a cut be decisive and go because in college you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field but not on the nfl level Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Hurry up, here we go. They run it with a fullback. This is Austin Johnson. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. Now it's a good chunk of yardage picked up there. And the big fella, sometimes he doesn't need a whole lot of space created. He can make his own way. The Bucks on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This time they face a third and two. Here we go now. Three and eight. Here's Taylor to throw. He's got Evans. And he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. On first and 10, it's Taylor. Over the middle to Evans. Mike Evans, he's going to go. Pass the 20. And he's able to get this down deep on the giant side of the field. A big play there on the catch and run. And even 70 yards. Here we go. On first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Cameron Bray, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bucs have taken the lead here in the fourth. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet 
or they just executed better? Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. Extra point good by Catanzaro. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. That time, a six-play drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And New York set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating Let's first go. downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Throwing to start the drive. Stevenson. And nearly picked off there. And it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. They got the win last week despite not having any interceptions. Tried to come up with one there, could not. But there's a stat category called PBU, pass breakup. That's important, too, and they got one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because at least you're there knocking the ball away, offense isn't possessing it, making plays downfield, and you just continue to harass the receivers, harass the quarterback, and maybe the big play does occur down the road. Nice job there, right, of just going through the progressions, finding the open man, even if it wasn't for a 25-yard game. Everything does not have to be spectacular. The mundane works pretty well in this league, as we just saw there. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. On first down, Stevenson. Open man right side is Ingram. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Set, three, 19. Operating from the gun, Stevenson. And this is Shepard on the catch. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. On third and two, Stevenson. And this is going to be incomplete. So now it's fourth down and short. And whatever they do, run or pass it, they've got to pick up the first here. Yeah, and you mentioned running it. That is still an option. But as you also said, they've got to do it quickly and get back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Those really long field goals, when they are made, they are things of beauty. But there is a danger to getting them started, isn't there? Yeah, with that low drive, you've got to really keep it low to the ground, don't you, to get that distance. Yeah, hard to just pop it up in the air because otherwise it's not going to get there. So he's got to drive it low in order to have the distance, and that usually puts it in jeopardy, gives him a chance to block it, and everyone knows it on the other side. That's when you get your best jumpers on the other side of the field and try and get up and get it. 
And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Wow, a personal foul at this stage in the fourth. Automatic hard first day. Really hard to believe. And now that glow of hope that you had begins to flicker out, doesn't it? Yep. Well, now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Here we go now. Three. And they'll run it here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Rodgers and a short gain here down to the 22 the Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next the Bucks on third down just one for five to this point this time it's third and three And on the ground they go with a running back. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So now Catanzaro comes on in a pressure spot. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring and how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. And they're able to stop it here on the spike with three seconds remaining. And it's incomplete, but there is still two seconds left in this ball game. So they'll have one final shot. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. One final shot. They'll look to throw. That is caught. Touchdown, and no time remains. And they're an extra point away from winning this football game. 
And the celebration is now just an extra point away from being full on. Think about those who may have left the stadium a little bit early thinking their guys might not get this done. Oh, it got done and in a big way. No time on the clock. This to claim victory. And now the Bucs decided to take a timeout defensively. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. No time on the clock. This to claim victory. The kick is good. And can you believe this? They win it with zeros on the clock. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for the Giants, it's a win that might keep them alive in the playoff race as they're back to 500 at 5-5. Five and five. And they will hit the road next week for a date with the Philadelphia Eagles. Meanwhile, for Tampa Bay, it's a loss that'll drop them back to 500 through 10 games. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves next week at home against San Francisco. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.